What's up my loves and my fellow innate creatives? This video will be showing you how to set up your dual screens or your multiple monitors so that you can attend the Innate Academy courses and you'll have me explaining things and showing my screen on one screen and then you'll have your Photoshop set up on your main display that way you can follow along you can still work and it makes things so much simpler than trying to do um, everything off of one screen and it was a suggestion now it is a requirement to have dual screens because i realize not only is it going to make it easier for you it will also make it easier for the class when you're sharing your screen or you need help i can chime in i know exactly what monitor to help you with okay so without further ado we'll go ahead and get started with setting this up the first thing I want you to do is go to your uh, search and you're gonna type in display okay and then you're gonna go to your display settings and it should look something like this if you have already plugged in your other monitor that's something we kind of need to talk about too so let's do this before we get into how to set them up let me give you a few options okay one option is that you have a laptop and you're going to have a monitor. Now, in this case, I'm just showing you general kind of shopping for a monitor. Um, you'll have some monitors that are somewhere around $60 to $120 um, if you needed to purchase a secondary monitor. Um, another thing that people in the NA Creatives group came up with is a solution that you can go to your local electronics store. Um, and sometimes you'll find the open box items or you can go to even the, um, the secondhand electronics store and find screens for about $30, okay? And you can't beat that to have an additional screen. And I always tell folks that once you start designing, especially with Photoshop, on two screens, you'll probably never go back to a single screen. And the reason why is that you can reference one screen so even when you're designing you kind of need something to reference or when you're typing you need something to reference you reference on one screen and then you design on the other so the same way that you're taking the course is probably how you would end up carrying out your design tasks in the future so i'm just letting you know how you can do this another thing is instead of purchasing a monitor if you have a small tv um, or even a large one. I'm just not recommending that you pull your big screen TV off the wall or move your big screen TV. Um, but typically any, uh, anywhere from like a 42 inch TV and down, you can probably move pretty easily. It's pretty lightweight as far as a flat screen goes. And you can set that TV beside you. Okay. Um, if you have your computer right next to you right now I want you to look at a couple of things here and I'm going to show you basically because I'm trying to make this a quick video I'm showing you all off of my screen so I want you to look at your laptop and you will have an HDMI port most likely so I'm going to show you what that looks like just through images all right so this little part that circled here here we are zoomed in that's your HDMI port if you're already using your monitor, your monitor, or if you're already using your laptop, it has a monitor. That's your monitor number one, okay? When you set up a TV with it or another monitor with it, that will be your display number two, okay? So you will use an HDMI cable most likely in that case. Some of you may have VGA if you have that type of cord available. Usually it's desktops. I don't see uh, laptops these days with VGA or the uh, DVI ports, most of the time you're gonna see the HDMI port for that, okay? And most computers are gonna support the two screens if you're doing HDMI, all right? So if you don't have a way to do two screens, then make sure that you message uh, the NA Cre or create a uh, question on the NA Creatives group, and then we'll try to figure out a way to help you do this before we get to class time, because it's 
probably very few of you who don't have a computer that's capable of doing two screens okay so this is going to be your best bet you won't have a delay last time we had some people watching it um, watching the video live on YouTube and there was a delay and they had to watch it on their iPad versus doing the work on their computer and I wanted I want to ameliorate all of that solve the problem by saying have dual screens ready to roll before class starts if there's an absolute uh, exception to that and you just cannot do it then definitely let us know before you purchase the course and we'll try to see if there's a way that we can make this work for you uh, but I'm just telling you that the, the best way the easiest way for you to learn the easiest way for you to set up okay so right now I have my laptop and then I have another little screen it's actually a, a screen that I can draw on all right and I use this for when I'm you know showing you all things to click on and that sort of thing so I have my little it's called a tablet but it's not a separate tablet like a, a for instance what you might call your iPad is a tablet it's not like that it's actually a tablet that is meant to to be its own screen and also a way that I can use it as a mouse alright so I have that I'm just gonna call it my little screen I have my little screen connected to my laptop via this HDMI port and an HDMI cord alright so make sure that you have a setup that will enable this so from here um, I'm also going to tell you that if you have a desktop um, most of the time for your desktop desktop you may have several different ports now you may only have one HDMI cord or HDMI port and that is that's typical for a lot of desktops so uh, what I want to show you is some of the other ports that you have let's see so this one actually has two areas or two places where you can have um, HDMI but this might be input and output typically what you're gonna see I'm gonna put in HDMI and VGA now this is a, this is a little bit weird because we're at a phase now where where computers are starting to phase out the DVI ports or starting to phase out the uh, VGA ports so if you don't have any if you do not have um, any uh, VGA so VGA is the blue one DVI is that white one it looks pretty similar but it has white instead of the blue if you don't have any of those and you have a desktop computer more than likely you have a way to set up two HDMI cables which is great because that means you probably have an updated computer with an updated graphics card and you're ready to go if you do not have that typically if you look at the back of your computer Let me check out see if I can see some backs of the computers so here is an example of kind of what that setup would look like and I have a computer that set up I have a desktop computer that's set up like this where I have a VGA cable that's that blue cable that's the old-school monitor cable right you don't get as high as a resolution but it works and then I have an HDMI so I have a desktop computer with two screens and one screen is run by the HDMI one screen is run by the VGA and both screens work simultaneously okay so that's another way you can set it up uh, let's see there are these special type of um, adapters right so let's say you only have one um, one HDMI port and you want to split it up into two screens that's a whole nother monster and more than likely I would suggest at that point in time you uh, if it's a laptop take it up to um, to Best Buy or whatever electronic store you have locally and tell them hey I need something that I can use uh, for to to give me dual screens or to give me two screens and most of the time it's going to be something that has a little box that may have its own graphics card okay so what will happen is it'll be a splitter and it'll have its own graphics card and you'll use the graphics card from your computer for one screen and then this little extra box will be a graphics card that will support a second screen um, and I'm trying to see if I see one something like that to help you out 
um, is, is not very common. Most desktop computers, you're going to have a way to display two screens. Um, it's very common, but if you don't have that ability, it, it may be something like this where you have an adapter that has a graphics card built into it and it allows you to split that data up into two different monitors. So hopefully you don't have to do that because it is kind of difficult to find these type of adapters in a local setting, um, but I hope you don't have to go through that. All right, so I went through a couple of scenarios. One is a laptop with a TV or a monitor. The other is a desktop with two monitors because you, you naturally have to have at least one monitor for the desktop setup. You don't have to have um, another monitor for the laptop in order to use a laptop, but in order to use in order to participate in the course, you need two screens. So whether it's laptop or desktop, you need two screens. Now if you're a Mac user, I know that's very, very difficult. So I'm, I know I'm going to get some of you all chiming in and saying, hey, it's not so easy to do dual screens on a Mac because you all have to have these special adapters and these certain types of uh, plugins and that sort of thing. And if that's the case, I don't want you to go out and purchase an $800 monitor, uh, you know, just because you need a certain type of Apple monitor for your setup. We will figure something out for that. Um, but it will have some type of delay to it. So you'll either be watching from the um, the YouTube live version of it where you'll be able to watch it on a tablet or something you need one other monitor device I don't recommend using your cellular phone for the screen because I'm gonna be showing you what to do and I don't want you looking at a tiny phone screen trying to figure out how to navigate Photoshop so uh, what I really want you to do is try the dual screen method if the dual screen method will not absolutely not work for you, then I want you to figure out how we can possibly um, use another screen device such as a, um, a iPad, another, even another laptop. Um, so let's say you can use one laptop just to watch me on, another laptop to work on, or you can work on uh, work on your desktop, but use the, the laptop to watch me. It takes up another seat and sometimes that puts us in a, a bad position as far as trying to accommodate everyone in the uh, in the group. So dual screens is our preferred method. In just a moment, I'm going to show you how to set up those dual screens. All right, so now that we have discussed the different types of ways that you can have uh, two different screens, I'm gonna show you how to change your display settings. So in this case, let me go ahead and close out of this, show you how to get to it again. You wanna go ahead and plug in your TV or your monitor. Make sure it has power. And on top of that, we wanna go ahead and plug it into our computer device. So if you're doing an HDMI cable or VGA or whatever the case may be, go ahead and plug it in. And my suggestion is to restart the computer. Okay. A lot of computers, once it restarts and it has a peripheral attached to it, it will try to make sure that it can read that as an appropriate uh, display device. You may have to download a driver. It is very rare that you have to download a driver to use a display or a monitor. So in this case, I'm telling you right now, if you go ahead and plug in your um, plug in your TV or your monitor, make sure it has power, then go ahead and plug in the HDMI cable, okay? If you plugged in the HDMI cable and automatically these, these settings work for you, great. If not, then I want you to restart. So let me show you what settings I'm talking about. We're going to go to the search bar and type in display and we'll see display settings pop up. Another thing is, if you don't know how to do that, um, you can go to your control panel and you'll see the display settings from your control panel as well. All right, so in this case, what you probably will see is something a little bit like this. If you don't see two screens on here, I want you to hit detect, okay? Now, right now, it's telling me I, uh, that the computer did not detect another display, and that will be correct because it already has the two there. Now, if I hit identify, it's going to show me this is my screen one, and then the uh, screen two is going to pop up on another screen. So I'm actually going to show you both of my screens right now, just so you get an idea of what's going on on each screen.
So you'll see my main screen. And what I'll do is I'll make this a little bit smaller. Just a little bit. And then if, if there's anything obstructing the view, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll go ahead and take off the second monitor view. All right, so my second monitor view right now is actually showing my recording software. So I'm going to close that out so that you should be able to see my full screen and my secondary screen. All right, so let me show you what these display options look like when you see that. If I go to Identify, you'll see that the number one pops up on my main screen and the number two pops up on my secondary screen. You should see that happen if your, if your computer is reading that it has dual screen set up. Now, you will have to arrange these screens in a certain way. If you only see one screen here, and I wanna show you, I'm actually gonna duplicate the problem that we had a lot of people have, is that your multiple displays will already be set to duplicate the displays. So as you scroll up, it's going to show this a one slash two. And if I hit identify, it doesn't know which one is one. It doesn't know which one is two. It just knows it's just duplicating the display. And that's just what it is. So what we want to do, if you see this one slash two, it's, it's identifying that you have two screens. It just doesn't have a preference for one or two. And that's because they are duplicated. If we scroll down, we can go down to where it says multiple displays and instead of duplicate the displays, we want to go to extend these displays. So when I click on extend these displays, I'm going to go to keep changes, scroll up. There's my one. Here's my two. And it might even show me like this or it might show me like that. And what I have to do is I have to rearrange these to describe the environment that I'm in. So let's say screen one is going to be your main monitor. That's where your Photoshop is going to be. Make sure screen one equals Photoshop, okay? Because when you share a screen with me, I'm going to tell you to share your screen one. And if everybody has Photoshop on their screen one, you'll know precisely what to share with me, okay? So screen one is going to be your main display that you have Photoshop on. Your screen two is going to be your auxiliary or your extra display. All right. That's what you're going to be watching me on is your screen two. You're going to be working on screen one and watching me on screen two. So for instance, if this is my screen one is my laptop and let's say I'm going to connect myself to my living room TV. All right. Some of you may even be able to connect wirelessly and I'll show you that in just a moment. So screen two is my living room TV and I'm, I know it's to the left of me, but if my living room TV is to the right of me, I'm going to bring it over to the right. And some of your, your screens are going to be huge. So next to your laptop screen, this too will be huge. And that's fine. As long as you're describing the right location of that, then that means I will be able to scroll from one screen and the, you see how the mouse is stopping right now. My mouse won't stop there. It'll keep floating over to the other screen. Okay. So that's one thing. Um, I do want to show you the way mine is set up is I have screen one on the top and screen two on the bottom of my screen two is a screen that I can I can write on and draw on so that's why I have my screen two at the bottom there so what you're gonna do after you get your orientation correct is you're gonna hit apply alright your system is going to apply those changes and you'll be able to see that you have your extended displays if you possibly have a display that you can connect to via um, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth you might see that option here. Let me see if I even have. And here's some things here. You, you're you going to have some options within your uh, settings to basically get some help with setting up multiple screens. Oh, here it is. Connect to a wireless display. So if I want to connect to a wireless display, technically... I don't think I have one within my immediate vicinity that I can attach to. But here, if you can, if you hit connect to a wireless display, if you have a display that works via Bluetooth, you will you will find it in this search here. And then if you don't find it, go to where's my device and that'll be a whole nother deal um, that you'll have to work on. OK, 
So I'm going through just basically how everybody can get set up. So in this case, we're good to go. We have both monitors showing we have the proper orientation. Again, if I hit identify, it's going to identify one and two there. All right, and I have my monitor. You probably won't see this color profile. I have my um, my monitor profiled with a colorimeter so that I get better results from my monitor to my my prints. And that's it. I hope that's all that you have to do and you should be ready. So now when I have one on top of two, I can float my mouse. See how my mouse doesn't stop at the bottom of the screen for number one and it shows up on monitor number two. That is precisely what you want. However you have this oriented is how you're going to flow, how your work is going to flow and how your mouse flows because you're going to use this one mouse to go to either of these screens. Okay, that's it. That is it in a nutshell. Um, I am going to... Go ahead and post this video. This is the last video of the series of what you need in order to have um, or be prepared for the homework session. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my display number two right now on this video because what I want to do is check in with my homework now. That homework checklist is crucial. All right, so I can get out of all of this close out of that and now that you have your dual screen set up you'll be able to go to any of these tabs in uh, on innate lab and you'll be able to purchase the course for friday okay so let's go ahead and check on that homework all right so so far we have a whole video where we went through the do it now and we downloaded the files place them in the N8 Academy folder that we created on the desktop. Then we installed all of our programs that we need for, for the session. We installed the fonts and we installed the brush pack. So make sure you check out those videos. Those links will be available in the description. So you will have access to them before you purchase the class. And then even after you purchase the class, you will get a copy of this checklist, okay? And I want you to make sure everything on here is checked off. As a matter of fact, we just did our dual screen setup so we can highlight that. And this means when all of these items are checked off that you are ready for the course, okay? So please, if you need help with the homework, let's say you couldn't download the brush pack or you couldn't install the brush pack and that's not checked off on your list, there is a homework session from five to seven. Usually it's gonna be a, a few hours or a couple of hours before our actual session to get you prepared. And this gives you time to do your homework, see what you're presently struggling with I'm not gonna say what you can't do I presently struggle with I'm not gonna say I can't but I presently struggle with downloading and installing the brushes then you're going to join this course to get some help it is not free it is $20 and that fee just covers me taking out that time to offer additional assistance to those who who want to be ready but just can't get ready okay so everything that's on this list I have provided videos for you to be able to do for the free ski, you understand? So your homework, I'm not giving you anything to do for your homework that you have to pay for, all right? If you need help with your homework, then what you're paying for is that mentor session, okay? You're not paying for homework, you're paying for mentoring if you cannot complete your homework. If you do not have the homework completed before the NA Academy course starts, then we have a problem there and you won't be able to participate actively. You'll have to passively participate, which means you watch the video, but you can't really do anything and you'll have access to the video so that you can do it later um, once you actually have your homework complete, all right? So we will not be stopping the course in order to take care of homework issues and that is a firm firm uh, position that I've taken um, only because that's what we spent a lot of time the last session kind of helping people with homework issues and uh, it's not fair to the people who are ready to go all right so that's it final video I'm going to go ahead and upload this one if you have any questions ask them in the NA creatives group I can't check all of these different sources for uh, for questions and 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 answer them for you so if you keep it in the NA creatives group 
even if I've answered it once, somebody will know what the answer is and be able to respond to you. And it's not all on me because it is impossible for me to keep up with all of the correspondence. OK, so in a creatives Facebook group, that's the private group. Ask your questions there. Do not share your links. All right. If we find that people are sharing links, you will be removed from the group and also removed from being able to purchase on the innate lab site. And I do not want to have to do that to anyone um, because I really feel like this is a way for you to expand your business, for you to expand your knowledge and have a certain type of confidence in what you do. And I don't want to restrict anybody from that. But trust and believe if I have to, I will go that route. All right. So no sharing the links. This is something you paid for. This is something that uh, is going to give you a competitive edge. So don't give somebody else that competitive edge for the free ski. All right. That's it, loves. I will check on you in just a bit. This link will be live as soon as this video uploads. All right. Then bye for now. I hope to see y'all at the Innate Lab course. Bye.